This is Ben from Life in 360 and in this video I've got the Garmin Verb with me and we're going to take a look at it to see whether it is actually the best prosumer 360 camera available right now. In my opinion it is but I'm going to take you through the strengths and the weaknesses to really figure out who this camera is for and whether it is worth buying. Starting with the design, this is a beautifully designed camera. It's really well built. It's, it feels very heavy, yet it actually is small. So you know you've got a lot of toughness in this camera. Um, it's able to do a lot inside, but on the outside it's very tough as well. The lenses are quite far apart. You'll see later on how this is an issue, an issue that can be fixed, but it, it is an issue because the lenses are quite far apart. I like this tripod. It's one of the best 360 camera tripods I've seen. It folds out really easily, it's very lightweight, and you can actually prop it up like that on a table and it'll balance. One thing about this tripod is that yes, it's an amazing tripod, however it does have a footprint. It will almost always be in your photos and videos when it's expanded like this. You will probably want to take it off and put the camera on something else like a tripod, a light stand, a selfie stick, just so you can minimize the presence of anything underneath the camera. So it's usable like that. Um, and you can use it with the legs out, but do expect it to be in your shots. You can edit that out of photos. It's harder with videos. So it's just something to be mindful of. The design of it is really simple. There aren't too many buttons or latches or anything on this side of the camera. We have a little latch that if you press that, it records instantly. Let's do it. and we're rolling. I think this is a cool feature for action shots because it just means you can get to shooting within five seconds instead of turning your camera on, going into the settings, going to video mode, and then realizing the Wi-Fi isn't connected to your smartphone, opening your smartphone, and then 30 seconds have passed and the moment has passed. So that's a cool feature. So if you are shoot planning on shooting events or anything moving or fast paced, then th this is a really cool feature of this camera. On the top of the camera, we only have three buttons, which are really, Simple, yet they do a lot. And in my experience, so far, I would say this is the best LCD screen I've worked with on a 360 camera. It's just very intuitive, easy to use, and it's just a pleasure to operate. I really like the simplicity of it. And to me, the intuitive nature of the layout makes it so much easier to get specific things from my camera without getting frustrated. So if I wanna change several different modes, I wanna change my white balance or my resolution or the stitching or whatever, I can do that very easily. And the display is really nicely designed. In terms of carrying the camera around, it didn't actually come with a camera bag, which is unusual because basically every other 360 camera comes with some kind of bag. So you can put it back in the box if you wanna take it around, but who wants to take a box around? Um, something I found was a good solution was I found a lens bag on Amazon which is perfect for the verb it's by a well-known brand low pro and it just fits in nicely like that and it's gonna be really well padded um, would recommend it I'll put a link to this down in the description but you will need to buy your own camera bag with the Garmin verb in terms of memory it can take a 128 gigabyte micro SD card you probably could push it and go up to 256 see if it will work it probably will haven't tried it yet but this is a camera that will go through more memory than the average camera because it is shooting 4K, but also you can shoot 5.7K on this and that's going to really burn up the memory really fast. So you will want to get a couple of SD cards if you're using it. In terms of battery life, I found this to be an exceptional performer. It's lasted probably longer than any other 360 camera I've used. On the website, they say about an hour and 10 minutes, but I think it's probably more like an hour 30. It just depends if you're shooting for that entire time or if you're shooting then resting, shooting then resting, you're probably going to get more like two to three hours. Fortunately, this is one of the few cameras that has replaceable batteries and you can also get a power kit that Garmin made. I'll put links to those down in the description. So if you're shooting for a long time, you will probably want to get a few batteries along with your memory cards. Um, it's just good having that option. Personally, I only use one battery, it's fine. I only go out shooting for an hour or two anyway, so that's enough to go and get some good photos and videos. 
come home and then charge it up and then it's good to go again. But there are some more hardcore shooters out there that actually will want that extra battery that wanna shoot all day long. So let's talk resolution for both photo and video. And here is an area that I think the Garmin Verb is going to separate itself from the competition. And that is, I would describe this camera as more of a video camera than a photo camera. It does perform excellently for video, not so much for photo. It can do 4K resolution with stitching in camera and it can do 5.7K resolution unstitched. In terms of photo resolution, it only does 15 megapixel photos, which is very average compared to all the other 360 cameras. So this isn't really a camera you should buy if you're more into photos than videos. This is for video shooters. I would say videographers that are looking to add 360 work to their clients and really start shooting professionally with 360. This is an awesome 360 video camera for semi-professional use. I've had some amazing results with it and I would feel really confident using it for any client work. I know I could really shoot some impressive stuff. If you saw my comparison of the Garmin Verb, the Xiaomi Mijia Mi Sphere and the Gear 360 2016, you'll see that it won the battle and the footage looked better in almost every situation. So this is something I would feel confident charging clients hundreds if not thousands of dollars for professional 360 video content because I know this can deliver. Like I said, if you're buying it for photos, you're going to be disappointed. So think of this as a video camera that shoots okay photos, not an okay photo camera that shoots really good video. With post-production, this is going to be something that will take you a bit of time. Unfortunately, Garmin have made a mistake. I assume it's a mistake in delivering their footage at a 16 by nine resolution, not realizing that 360 video has to be two by one. That's how it wraps around a sphere. It can't be 16 by nine. 16 by nine is what you see in a normal viewing window. When you're working with 360, having the correct aspect ratio is crucial to having the proper field of view stretched around the sphere and not having it stretched out. If you stretch 16 by nine around a sphere, it's going to be warped in the vertical direction. Everything will seem tall than it actually is. So therefore, you will have to take it into Adobe Premiere or whichever editor you use and resize the footage yourself. You'll have to change the aspect ratio. It doesn't actually take a super long time, but at the moment it's something you're going to have to do every time because they haven't fixed it yet. I'm hoping they do offer a firmware update that fixes this, but I never like to think too far ahead. Whenever I talk about a camera, I talk about the camera they deliver us straight away, and if they improve it, great. If they don't, realistically, we're going to be stuck with what they give us to begin with. So resizing your footage is going to be an essential element of your workflow every time you're shooting. It's just one extra step. Although they do have in-camera stitching, which is awesome, and they're taking away a step, they're also adding a step in forcing you to change the aspect ratio at the end. One of the things that excites me the most about this camera is the ability to shoot in flat mode, where you're shooting desaturated colors. So it's relatively flat when you import your footage. However, it gives you more latitude later on in post when you do want to enhance the colors. I'm a color grading nerd. At one point in my life, I wanted to be a colorist for feature films. That was one of my, my failed dreams that never worked out, but I've always been a massive color nerd. Whenever I shoot a photo, I'll spend so much time grading it. Whenever I shoot video, I'll spend time grading it. With the video you're watching now, I shot it in flat AVC HD format. So later on, I can bring it into Premiere and do this to it. So that's a really good feature for the Garmin Verb. You can now really have a lot of control over your colors, over the shadows, the highlights, um, the saturation, everything, the, the look and the feel. To me, that's an essential part of the video production experience is really giving it a strong feel in the color grade. And for me, I'm totally geeking out over this camera because it's giving me the color grading options I've always wanted as opposed to having a really contrasty or a really just uninspiring image to begin with. This retains all the data and lets you play with it later on. This is an awesome feature, so if you're into color correction like me, this is going to be one of the best 360 video camera options available right now. With that said too, the Xiaomi Mi Jia Mi Sphere also does have really good dynamic range and an ability to grade in post, as you'll see in my comparison, but I would say this is one level better. The dynamic range is better, and just overall, you can get a wider range of options from your colors than you can with basically any other camera right now. Now, here's a feature I know a lot of people are going to get excited about, and that feature is this camera is waterproof. You can take it underwater and it shoots really clear, amazing photos and videos. I took it for a swim and I was amazed at how clear the video looked. It was incredible. I went to my local swimming pool and I didn't even have to put this thing into a waterproof case or anything. You can just plunk it straight in water. I think it's at least up to 10 meters deep and it 
performs as if it's on dry land. It even picks up sound underwater, which is pretty cool. Yeah, it's basic sound, but what can you expect from, from an underwater 360 camera? But this is an awesome underwater 360 camera from what I've seen so far, and I would say it has produced the best result for a consumer 360 camera underwater. You don't need the housing, and often the housing actually does create a layer of mist around the camera and makes it kind of harder to see what's around. I know you're probably finding it hard to take me seriously with these things on. So when the lenses are seeing exactly what is around them without another layer of glass covering them, you're going to get an even clearer image, which to me makes this the best consumer slash prosumer underwater 360 camera available right now. So if you are into swimming, extreme sports, and you do want to go in the water, then this is going to be a really good option for you, if not the best. The next feature of the Garmin Verb I want to talk about is the fact that it's shockproof. And I know what you're thinking, Shockproof, who gives a shit? I don't need a shockproof camera. Well, neither did I. Until. Look what I just did to my gum and verb. Yeah, ouch. had it set up right there on my light stand and it was not very secure at all. And I stupidly walked away and it went smash. That certainly was not the proudest moment of my career, that's for sure. And yes, I did cry myself to sleep that night with my thumb in my mouth. But the next morning I went onto the Garmin website and I realized you can actually buy replacement lenses for this camera. And to me, this saved me 1100 Australian dollars because I was able to bring what I thought was a dead camera back to life by changing the lens. It cost me about $60 for two new lenses and I was able to change it within about 20 seconds. And this was such a lifesaver. I cried tears of happiness after this because it means I now have my camera back and it's working good as new. I honestly couldn't believe it. This camera looks untouched, yet I did that really, really stupid thing by having my light stand really poorly positioned on the concrete there, and I should have expected that to happen. Don't know why I didn't, but I'm so thankful. This is my favorite feature. I mean, yes, there are many other features I prefer, but this is my new favorite feature because it means I can actually have a Garmin Verb still, and I have something here to review for you. So this is a really good thing. Um, for a camera company to add to their camera, a replaceable lens. I've seen this happen with so many people using other cameras like the Theta S, the Gear 360, where they've scratched one of the lenses and they've essentially had to buy themselves a new camera because there's been no fix. You can't change the lenses on the vast majority of cameras. So to me, to be able to do that means you actually don't have to buy a new camera. So that's pretty big. And given the body is shockproof and the lenses are replaceable, that is a big thing for the longevity of this camera. And I know even if I do the same stupid thing again, it will probably live on to shoot more photos and videos. One of my other favorite features of this camera is the six axis stabilization. Yes, this is becoming a common thing for cameras to have now, and it's the coolest thing ever. But the Garmin Verb is a level above because it gives you more specificity with how you do actually stabilize your footage. And it has a mode called follow mode, which means it will stay locked onto a target and you can run around like this and it will stay locked onto me almost as if it's like that. Whereas if I'm using any other camera, when you start moving around, you move actually within the video file. You don't stay in the center. You'll move from, from side to side. And this can be quite disorienting if you're doing it a lot. So I really do like this feature a lot. This is really, really cool. Something that Garmin pushed a lot as a big feature of this camera was the ability to do G metrics where you can get graphics to display on the screen that tell the audience how fast you're going, where you're going, what path you've taken around your landscape. When I see this info in a 360 video, honestly, I just don't care that much. Unless they're setting a land speed record, then I'd wanna know how fast someone's bike is going, but otherwise, I just don't really care. So if it's something that's important to you, then this is a cool feature. To me, it's just kind of pointless and I'm never going to use it. But hey, there's many other cool things about this camera that I would much prefer over G metrics. Now let's talk about stitching. As I said at the beginning of the video, the lenses are quite far away away from each other, which means the stitch is never really perfect, unfortunately. They do give you a good amount of control over this because you can actually choose the stitch distance. You can choose near or far, which changes things a little bit. In my experience, 
the stitch has never been good for anything close to the camera. If you go near the seam line and you're within at least six feet, you're going to notice basically anything that passes is going to get cut off. Yes, you can bring it into other programs like Mystica VR, which is really good for advanced stitching. And from what I saw from Mick's video from 360 Rumors, when he used the Garmin Verb with Mystica VR is the stitch looked perfect. And that's gonna be something that I do play with in the next few weeks. However, this is something you'll definitely need to keep in mind while you're shooting, not to get too close to the seam line. I found this issue to be particularly bad around the nadir and the zenith, which means the bottom and the top. And I found it to be so bad that it creates a blurry, badly stitched line. You will need to be very careful of this, not to put any important details in those areas. Again, Mystica VR or manually stitching in another program will fix this. Next, we have live streaming, and the Garmin Verb can in fact stream at a full 4K resolution, which is amazing. And as you can see here, I started my first live stream pretty successfully, and the quality was looking nice. However, something I noticed after a while was it started getting really glitchy. I had a lot of people reporting that they were experiencing issues, and looking back, the glitches still remain on the saved version of the broadcast. Also, when I did this stream, it lasted a full eight minutes. However, YouTube only uploaded four minutes to the broadcast. It cut out an entire middle section, which to me says that it couldn't handle the 4K, and it only uploaded the bits that were clear, which were four minutes of the eight. You can see this example on my YouTube channel. However, something that I realized from doing this was that even if I had the world's fastest internet, the majority of viewers are not going to have that. So 4K is going to be really choppy for them anyway. So stream at 4K at your own risk. At the moment, I think global internet speeds can only handle HD live streaming. Another feature of this camera is spatial audio. It has microphones on each side of the camera that capture sound in all directions. However, to be honest, I haven't really seen spatial audio used that effectively and if you do want to record professional sound you're still going to get very average sound even if you're recording in spatial audio when you're recording from a 360 camera i think it's a better idea to professionally record your sound use a lapel mic or use another kind of sound recorder and have more control over that instead of recording out of a camera it's just like recording from your iphone yeah it's going to be okay but if you want a professional result don't expect it no matter how good the camera says it is to be able to pick up a sound 100 meters away or pick up your voice amongst a group of 100 people with a lot of clarity because it's not going to do that. This is just basic. It's a good feature, but I wouldn't buy it for spatial audio. In terms of compatibility, it's compatible across iPhone, Android, Mac, and PC. You will want to check the Garmin website to make sure it's compatible with your model of phone or computer, but essentially you will need a fast phone or computer if you do want to process 4K footage. Garmin also made their own computer software. You can download it for free, and I found it to be really well built, and you can get a good amount of control over your videos, and you can even cut videos within that program. It's not perfect, but it's one of the better computer programs I've seen released by a 360 camera company. So that will definitely be a big help in your workflow. Finally, let's talk about the price. At the moment, it goes for US $799. And you will want to double check that at the time of watching this video. Click the link in the description and it'll take you to the most recent listing. But for me, that's an affordable price for a camera that can deliver exceptional 360 video. And if you actually are working professionally and you think you can use 360 video in your professional work and bring it to clients, and this is going to be a no-brainer because you could make back the entire price of the camera within your first job. At first, I was quite reluctant to buy the Verb, but now that I actually have played with it and I've seen the amazing results, the amazing dynamic range, the stabilization, and all the cool features that make it a camera that's very easy to work with and shoot with, and you can get a professional result pretty quickly. And it doesn't actually take that much longer than most of the other 360 cameras. This is probably the only camera that I own that I would feel comfortable using professionally and charging clients a good amount of money for. The others are obviously aimed more at the consumer market, whereas this is for prosumer. So if you use this smartly and you have clients that you can pitch 360 video projects to, I think this is gonna be your camera of choice because it delivers exceptional 4K video and also you might wanna look at that 5.7K option because there are programs like Mystica VR and I'm looking for other options that are even cheaper that'll allow you guys to stitch 5.7K video from the Verb 
hopefully in Premiere. I think there's a way and I think there might be a way with After Effects too. I'm going to look into it. So this is a 5.7K camera, although you can't really rely on it. I would more call it a 4K camera and 4K is going to be easier to work with. However, if, you're really, if you really feel strongly about resolution, then it is workable to shoot 5.7K. For anyone that owns the Verb, is going to buy the Verb, or even thinking about it, or just curious, I'd highly recommend you check out the Garmin Verb Facebook group, because there's heaps of users posting every single day in the group about their experiments and their, the things they're enjoying about, it, the things they're not enjoying about. It. So it'll give you a, a really accurate idea of how people are using it and the things they're kind of experiencing. If you have any questions about the verb, I've found the people in that Facebook group to be extremely knowledgeable and they will more than likely be able to solve any issue you have or any questions you have if you're thinking about buying. I also forgot to mention it doubles as a hammer. So if you do need to hammer in any nails, it works just like that. And then you can get out your next replacement lens and then it becomes a very expensive hammer. Don't do that. All right, guys, feel free to leave a question in the box below if there's anything that's still unclear, but I think this is going to be an awesome camera for prosumers. This is the best prosumer 360 video camera for many, many reasons. And I'm really looking forward to shooting professional content with this. I know I'll be able to get lots of amazing landscapes and time lapses and potentially pitch work to clients using this camera because I would feel confident, like I said, earning money with this camera. Okay guys, until next time, keep capturing your world in 360. Pick up yourself a 360 camera of any kind. If it's not the verb, make it something else. Check out my YouTube channel because I've got so many reviews, comparisons, tutorials, tiny planets, all of it. You can find that at Life in 360. We're also on Facebook at facebook.com slash Life in 360 photo. I'm on Instagram at Ben Claremont and we're on Twitter too, but you guys know I suck at tweeting, so no obligations there. All right guys, this is Ben and the world's most expensive hammer signing out and we will see you in the next video video.